Item number SCP CT four nineteen Security Level three Containment Class Euclid Disruption Class Eki Risk Class Critical Assigned Site Site seventy eight Site Director Leah Victor Research Head Todd Jackson Assigned Task Force Sigma twenty six Shinigami's Eyes Special Containment Procedures SCP-6419 is to remain in a plexiglass case inside of Site-78, Room 43. SCP-6419 is not to be handled or opened by any living being. If it is to be moved for any reason, then the usage of robotics or drones shall be required. If opened, no personnel are to look at its pages. In case of testing, one pig specimen is to be exposed to the book by a drone. MTF Sigma 26 Shinigami's eyes are to monitor the subject, intervene to save the life of the subject if requested by the supervising researcher, and mitigate contempt breaches caused by SCP-6419. Update. No further testing with SCP-6419 is allowed in accordance with the Ethics Committee. Any sentient being who survives for longer than 24 hours after contact with SCP-6419 is to be terminated. See a note regarding Researcher Jackson's research into SCP-6419 for more information. Description. SCP-6419 is a leather-bound hardcover book with a blank front and back cover. On the spine of SCP-6419 is an engraving that reads, Second of Nine. Its covers and pages appear to be immune to tearing and liquid spilled on its pages will dry up. The book's primary effect is a touch site based cognito housed activated when a sentient being touches the book with her hands or feels its contents directly. This effect will extend to the last person to view or touch SCP-6419 once the current target expires. While a subject makes contact or views SCP-6419, a new story will be written on its pages at a rate of 40 words per minute through unknown anomalous means. SCP-6419 currently contains 250 stories. Once a sentence is completed in SCP-6419, it will take effect in the real world in 60 seconds. The story written on the pages will inevitably lead to the affected person's death. SCP-6419 is capable of influencing reality in order to achieve its goal of subject termination. Often by manipulating persons, weather patterns, anomalies, among other variables, the range of this effect is currently unknown, although SCP-6419 has controlled phenomena in the radius of at least five miles. Subjects targeted by the book's effect may be saved from what is written among the pages, but the book will employ increasingly extreme methods to kill the subject. It will eventually reach a point that even those who attempt to save the subject of the anomaly's focus will also be put at risk. While others may be harmed or killed in the process, no new targets can be created by providing assistance to the main target of SCP-6419. Victims of SCP-6419 display heightened usage of writing and storytelling-based euphemisms and metaphors, as well as a strong desire to finish personal projects and get their affairs in order. These victims display anxiety and nervousness when they were impeded from these goals. During the initial 60 second window of the anomaly's writing, should two individuals look at the book one after the other and the second observer terminates the first observer within these first 60 seconds, the second observer will be spared by SCP-6419 with no actions taken by the object. These people are referred to in SCP-6419 as contractees, but the specifics of this title are currently unknown.
The book is believed to have a low level of sentience, and its methods appear to become more focused over time in an intelligent manner. Each additional story seemingly enhanced the effectiveness, speed, and lethality of the next story. SCP 6419's intelligence leads it to making slightly illogical writing choices. Occasionally, it won't direct people who could prevent the deaths of its target, or it will choose more complex deaths over simple ones. But researchers currently theorize that SCP-6419 is attempting to write more narratively dramatic deaths for its victims. Discovery On December 1st, 2022, MTF Sigma-26 raided a warehouse belonging to a cell of the Chaos Insurgency located in Data Expunged, North America. The mission was completed without any casualties and resulted in the deaths of 28 hostiles. The items recovered from the raid were SCP-6419, which was kept within a plexiglass container with the instructions for the object along with it. Document SC48986-6532 The serial catalog number SC22186-22327 Document type Step fragment Dates received October 6, 2022 Through undefined Operation status Open Forward Read clearly Gamma class of cell number 59, Delta Command has procured the book that we have sent to you in accordance with Operation Izanami. You are to hold the book until told otherwise. Keep all insurgency personnel from reading its pages or touching the book directly. Hereafter, I, the Red Scar, give you the steps of the plan as transcribed by the engineer of the Chaos Insurgency. 1. Step 22186. Receive the book and leave it in the warehouse. 2. Step 22327. Go on about your business. The object was classified as SCP-6419 and initially marked as safe. Until shortly after the mission, S-268 committed suicide by placing the tip of his M4A1 rifle to his chin and pulling the trigger. S-268 had handled the book before handing it over to the Foundation for containment. The object was then reclassified as Euclid, and testing began under the supervision of researcher Todd Jackson. Addendum 6491 The following tests are from the first round of testing of SCP-6419. No interventions were allowed. Unremarkable tests have been omitted. Summary of Tests 1 through 8 Early tests on SCP-6419 with pig specimens show that the anomaly would take the easiest route to kill the animal with what was closest. Put a pig alone in the room and it dies of a heart attack. Place the pig in a room with a D-class armed with a weapon and the D-class will kill the pig. It wasn't until I set up a test with a D-class and over 40 potential methods of termination did SCP-6419 chose a method that was more complex and grander, a true story of death. I wanted to continue with these human trials to see how it affected the mind of a sentient being, but Director Victor mandated that no more D-class be exposed to the book as it was a waste of life. So back to the pigs it is then, Researcher Jackson. Test number 9. Testing Mythology. One male pig, one female D-class. The female D-class is to be given a handgun and told to execute him. Both are going to touch the book, the pig first. Description of Event. After the pig is exposed to the anomaly, D-1958 terminates the subject, verbally and frequently expressing remorse at having to do so. She picks up the book and reads from it, despite being splattered with blood. D-1958 does not appear to have trouble reading. She says in verbatim, Jonah, oh, he's dead, sad. Samantha, 
D-1958 has done the intended deed, and in doing so, has eluded her grim fate. After several minutes, nothing anomalous or of note happened to D-1958. She was returned to her holding cell, following a 20-minute observation period. Notes. Interesting. We found a loophole, and I didn't even need to waste a D-class. Perhaps the rest of these tests can be run with animals. I'm beginning to wonder about the implications this book may have on Foundation activities. Stunningly, the book showed surprise at the actions taken by D-1958. This opens a whole new avenue for testing and observation into its behavior and knowledge of the world. Researcher Jackson 2. SCP-6419 Lead Researcher Jackson From Pathophysics Researcher Gregory Chutley Subject, Petition to Cease Testing Hello, Researcher Jackson. My name is Greg Chutley, and I was assigned to your team to provide materials and other equipment for testing. I must implore you to cease testing on SCP-6419. We've already had one D-class lose their life fruitlessly, not to mention how many pigs. It's immoral, and you get the same result every time. I knew you have a history of intensive testing, but this anomaly is only getting stronger with each and every story and its pages. I think we're playing with fire here, and we don't realize it yet. What if it figures out how to direct itself from getting touched again? If the book decided that it would be amusing if one of us tried to kill ourselves by walking straight into the O5 Council and offering one of them, what would we do about it? What? It would need sensitive information. It seems to know the names of everyone it writes about. Please, think about what I've said and respond as quickly as possible. To Pedophysics Researcher Gregory Chutley from SCP-6419 Lead Researcher Jackson Subject, Permission to Edit SCP-6952 Listen to me, Chutley. I have been working at the Foundation since you were in diapers. I know what I'm doing. We are the cusp of a breakthrough here. Do you not realize that we could use this to take out enemies of the Foundation? It doesn't matter how many tests we have to do. Forty, sixty, even a hundred. We must crack the secrets of the book and see if we can save one of those marked for death. The nature of science is to get to the bottom of every mystery. And I won't be stopped by some weak world animal activist that cares too much about pigs. Let the adults handle things, Chutley, and get Dr. Bright on the line. I have an idea. Addendum, c 4 The following tests are from the second series of scp c 4 testing. This battery of tests was conducted to see how interventions change scp c 4 effects. Unremarkable tests have been omitted. Test number 12. Testing Mythology. Dr. Bright wearing SCP-963 and one male D-class, a knife has been provided. Description of event. Dr. Bright was told to read SCP-6419, saying the following. Oh, the one whose story will never end. <sighs> Dr. Bright slits his throat with a knife and D-4343 puts on the necklace. Dr. Bright then cursed after the book for its apparent disinterest and then proceeded to slit his throat after 60 seconds had elapsed. D-4343 then placed SCP-963 on its neck and walked out as Dr. Bright. Notes. I wanted to see what would happen when the book came across someone he couldn't be killed. As it turns out, the book is merely annoyed by the fact that it is powerless to do anything. Bright seemed a bit dismayed that he was neutralized, but it was worth the shot. Researcher Jackson Test number 16 One male pig in an empty room Two medical and one MTF personnel on standby for three interventions. The subject was administered nitroglycerin for a heart attack. A minute later, the doctor who administered it attempted to kill the pig with a scalpel he had on his person. 
It's turned six two, enters the room and capacitates the doctor. A minute passed, and Miss Sergeant Marvin Fields came into the room holding a prime grenade. S twenty six two tried to talk Fields down, but he threw the explosive, and it subsequently detonated. Fields and S twenty six two suffered grievous but survivable injuries. The animal test subject expired from the injuries. Well, we know now that SCP-6419 does not care about collateral damage. If the person around them had intervened previously, it's a shame about what happened to Field and the MTF. But this has yielded invaluable information. The Grimoire can control and influence others without being in the vicinity. The test shall continue. Researcher Jackson Test 20. One male pig in the middle of the field. Two medical and six MTF personnel on standby for five interventions. First four interventions removed for brevity. The fifth and last attempt came when law enforcement were called to the scene on grounds that a dangerous animal had been spotted by a civilian. Due to the remote location, Researcher Jackson ordered the MTF to engage with law enforcement, but despite these efforts, a sniper was able to terminate the subject. Surviving law enforcement was amnesticized. This nearly got out of hand. I thought placing the damn pig in a place with hardly any danger might stump the book, but it got the better of me. This escalation of threat cannot go on forever. It must have a limit, and I will find it. Researcher Jackson Test 38 One male pig in an empty room Four medical and eight MTF personnel on standby for ten interventions. Initial eight interventions removed for brevity. The subject was chased into the site cafeteria. It nearly consumed a nearby bottle of cleaning fluid, but was stopped by S-26-1. A minute later, researcher Michael Jones entered the cafeteria with SCP-3108 and fired repeatedly at the subject devouring them into a pile of hater expunged. Two members of MTF Sigma-26 were killed in the incident. This is a breakthrough! SCP-6419 is aware of the nature of the anomalous. It can control them in some shape or fashion. It must consider it to be the ultimate escalation. Yes! This is what I was waiting for! I will break you, SCP-6419! Researcher Jackson Inquiry into test being performed by researcher Todd Jackson. Begin recording. The camera turns on, showing researcher Jackson in a leather office chair. He is currently fidgeting his fingers, looking impatient. Stating my name and title for the record, Site 78 Director Leard Richter. Interfering Todd Jackson on recent testing on SCP-6419, specifically test numbers 12 and 36. This is a waste of time. I need to get back to my research. Todd, you're deflecting. You know this is protocol. There are people above me who are concerned with what was happening here at our site. There is nothing to be concerned about. My research is continuing as planned. Nothing is to be concerned about. How about nearly killing Dr. Bright? You wanted to explain that? I knew it wouldn't kill him. You know how SCP-963 works. Bright is functionally immortal, and he consented. You knew the result regardless, and you didn't get permission to cross-test. And there is to be no cross-testing with this SCP. Victor, you've got to be kidding me. Think of the opportunities that we're missing out on. The last thing we need is that book in the hands of an anomaly. We don't know how it would act or if any of them would control its effects. Speaking of your recklessness, let's talk about 36. Well, about it, it was quite a tale. That is not how I would describe it. Two highly degraded MTF over a pig. Not to mention, Researcher Jones brought SCP-3108 out of containment after we recently retrieved it. That anomaly is at risk of causing more containment breaches. My bosses are furious. They want you gone, but they've left it to me to make the decision. 
I better hear a good explanation to why I should let you continue testing or you're being reassigned. Because I'm at the apex of my research, we finally confirmed it can control anomalies. If you just let me continue my tests, we can develop a method using the pigs as subjects to use the book to lure out anomalies in the field and contain them. We just keep the pig alive long enough in an area that we can expect an anomaly to be, and it should not only lure it out, but tell us information about it. You may have a point, Todd, but I can't excuse this college. I want to trust that the work you're doing is for the best, but I think this is a lost cause. I am 100% confident in the writing on the wall with SCP-6419. Please, let me finish my research, Leah. You know me. You know I can get results. <sighs> Fine, but no more Foundation casualties. You are to conduct your research using proper safety protocols. I'm also capping you at 65 tests. If I don't see a method on how to publicly lower anomalies out by then, or any Foundation personnel or D-Class perish during your efforts, we're locking SCP-6419 back in its container, and you can tender your explanation immediately. End of inquiry. 2. SCP-6419 Lead Researcher Jackson Subject, this has to stop, or I will go to the Ethics Committee. I cannot believe Site Director Victor is still letting you do this after the stunt you pulled. You killed innocent police officers, researchers, MTF, and God, the pigs! I can't let this continue. I'm submitting a report to the Ethics Committee to have your research shut down. Please, I beg you to stop the test now before anything else happens. Two Planet Physics Researcher Gregory Chutley From SCP-6419 Lead Researcher Jackson Subject Regarding this has to stop or I will go to the Ethics Committee. You are acting out of line, Chutley. We are this close to cracking the secret of the book. We can't stop now because of a few accidents. You will see in the end that this research is for the betterment of the Foundation and the world at large. You can go ahead and send that report if you want, but in the very current nightmare that is ethics handling paperwork, they won't get to it for a month, and in that time, I will have ended this book's story. Addendum 6419-3 The following tests are from the third testing sequence of SCP-6419. The goal of these tests is to entice SCP-6419 to invoke anomalies during its stories through consistent intervention. Tests where anomalies do not appear were removed. Test number 60 Testing Mythology one male D-Class was to escort one male pig outside a small rural town. Description of event After nearly 60 attempts on its life, D-7341 and its subject attempted to flee from an angry mob trying to execute the pig for perceived crimes. It was then that SCP-1233 landed on top of the subject, terminating him instantly. SCP-1233 then proceeded to ask the mob if they would assist him in defeating the moon monsters. The town was subsequently amnesticized, and efforts to contain SCP-1233 were unsuccessful. After 60 attempts that godforsaken grandma finally lured in a sentient anomaly, this is exactly what Director Victor wanted, but my inquiring mind has to ask, what is a larger threat than an anomaly? That is yet to be determined. Researcher Jackson Test 64 one male pig in the standard testing chamber. This event proved to be the longest any pig has survived with over 90 attempts made on his life. Such attempts included nearly getting your neck snapped by SCP-173, almost being mauled after suffering SCP-1313 and telling a bad joke to SCP-504. The pig was subsequently terminated by Foundation staff, loading them into the femur breaker to be killed by SCP-106. 
My, my, what a wonderful story. So many anomalies in one place. We such a Jackson. Log of SCP-6419 Test 65. Timeline of SCP-6419-65. 8 a.m. Test 6419-65 begins. 12 p.m. The 100th intervention is reached. Several cataclysmic anomalies break containment, causing numerous casualties. 12.10 p.m. Several MTF units, including Sigma-26, are deployed on scene to recapture the anomalies. 12.15 p.m. Researcher Chutley, along with Sigma-26-9, are seen evacuating researchers from the work stations. 12.20 p.m. Researcher Jackson is seen taking SCP-6419 from its current location and finding a place to hide with it. He appears to be reading through its pages and mumbling something. 12.30 p.m. Explosions rock the walls of Site-78 as Chaos Insurgency agents arrived. Though the specific cell hasn't been identified, they are believed to have been under the command of the POI known as the Red Scar. 12.35 p.m. Chaos Insurgency agents engage with Foundation MTF forces. The Red Scar appears to order her men to capture the anomalies and wipe out all opposition. 12.40 p.m. While combat is going on in almost all areas of the site, D-1958 picks up a rifle from a deceit MTF and starts heading towards Researcher Jackson's current location. 1 p.m. Foundation combat personnel have lost 25% of their forces. All anomalies have been moved to emergency holding cells, but Red Scar and a few of her special forces remain on site. Video recording found. Begin playback. Researcher Jackson is in his office reading SCP 3419's pages. Researcher Jackson is safe from the chaos around him. He only needs to wait until the MTF forces have cleared out the chaos insurgency. Good! That's good! What happens next? Researcher Jackson is narrating the final act of his story. A figure opens the door. A minute later, D-1958 opens the door and enters the study. D-1958 holds the rifle in one hand as they gesture with surprise. And it is D-1958, the one that was speared. Please, stop reading from my pages, Jackson. I don't want you seeing any spoilers. Jackson closes the pages. D-158, wait, no, the way you're speaking... You're the anomaly! Speaking through this common criminal, yes. We have a lot of fun together, Jackson. Although I was really striking it with your plot armor, allowing you to continue testing after you got all those people killed. W wait! Director Victor wasn't being lenient? That was you! Yes, every moment up to this point has all been orchestrated by Izanami's grimoire. The final plot by the Chaos Insurgency to trick the Foundation into picking up the book and falling into the hands of one researcher Jackson. Jackson would feed me as many stories as possible, trying his best to save my victims, but in the end, when our battle reached a fever pitch by unleashing all those cutters, the Chaos Insurgency would be waiting. Jackson appears distraught at D-1958 words. No, that's not possible! When would you have the opportunity to start doing this? Was it when the Chaos Insurgency got you from who knows where? When the MTF handed me the... Oh God, he handed me the book! Oh, 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 I can't answer that. That takes away all the intrigue. It doesn't matter who made me. What matters now is that your story has to end. Goodbye, Researcher Jackson. You were truly my greatest work. D-1958 terminate Researcher Jackson and heads back to the cell. D-1958 was later terminated in accordance with revised containment procedures. 1.30 p.m. The Red Scar manages to escape from Site-78, leaving four mangled MTF in her wake. The remaining commandos are captured. Site Director Victor 
issues an emergency order to researcher Chutley to take over Jackson's team and begin interviewing their commandos as soon as they were processed. 1.45pm A drone moves in and re-secures SCP-6419, placing it back into its protective case and moving it to its secure containment cell. A note regarding researcher Jackson's research into SCP-6419. After the incident regarding test C41965, it was discovered that researcher Jackson had been affected by SCP-6419 and was under the book's fall up until his death. Effective immediately, we are cancelling testing with SCP-6419 in accordance with the mandate given by the Ethics Committee. Further research into the origin of the grammar is currently ongoing. Researcher Chutley